Good Welcome to the UN and introduce you to Lord Ahmed, uh, the Minister from the British Foreign Office responsible for the United Nations, amongst other things. He's here on his third visit to the UN in three months. Lord Ahmed. Good morning. Thank you, Ambassador. And I'm delighted to be here and, of course, representing our interests as a P5 member. It underlines the importance the United Kingdom attaches not just to the UN, but specifically to the important work the Security Council is doing. Today, of course, we'll be discussing the Sahel and the steps which are being taken there. We are certainly supportive of the positive steps taken by the five countries contributing. We ourselves are committed to ensuring the common objectives that we're pursuing globally, for example, on the important issues of counter-terrorism. The UK is a leading country in this respect about building alliances and we want to ensure that we can take out the oxygen for these groups who are seeking to exploit people through terrorist and extremism. Equally a priority for our Prime Minister is the attacking the crime of modern slavery and human trafficking and again that's why we believe today's discussions will be extremely important and it's also about moving the region forward and therefore the United Kingdom has lent its support to it both in terms of the training we're providing to troops for example many troops have been trained within the Nigerian Nigerian army on the border and also across the region we've provided in the last year alone 225 million pound, uh, dollars of support so that underlines the financial commitment we're giving to ensuring we can bring peace stability and security to the wider region I'm happy to take one or two questions if Will you be announcing any new contributions today to the, the Sahel for specifically the G5? Well, I think what I'm keen to do today is listen to what others are announcing in terms of their contributions. I think it's important across the Security Council we agree a course of action. And as I've already underlined, the United Kingdom is very much committed to lending its support to the uh, wider objectives that we want to achieve because they're of common interest. Let's not forget, if we don't tackle these issues, they will exploit not just the region, they'll actually rear their head elsewhere in the world as well. And do you think there's a role for the UN, perhaps setting up a UN presence in the region, to oversee this, this new effort? Well, today I'm keen to hear from what the proposals are from the Secretary General, from the European Union representatives as well, and I think that will help to underline the approach that the Security Council can take together and collectively. But at the same time, let me under underline the fact that we believe on a bilateral basis as well and it's important that we look at how we can build up capacities of countries and that's why we invested a great deal of time for example on training some of the uh, troops in Mali to ensure that the training element of countries taking responsibility themselves can also be progressed in a okay, positive way. relationship with, with Cameroon and this anti-terror fight and, and are you aware of the issue of the anglophones in Cameroon? Do you, what, what's your view of that, of that issue? Well if I could answer that Wherever there is a challenge when it comes to counter-terrorism and the issue of counter-extremism, let me assure you, as a minister formally for countering extremism in the UK and our Prime Minister, who herself was Home Secretary, led the charge not just nationally but globally on that. Wherever we see any counter-extremism, we want to stamp it out. But the best way to tackle extremism is through a collaborative, collective effort, which is not just about countries acting together as we do through the Security Council, is how we strengthen the role of civil society in that respect as well. Thank you very much.